Hello, I'm Michael Nava, producer of the Henry Rios Mystery Podcast and the author of the crime novels the podcast is based on. Henry Rios is a gay Mexican-American criminal defense lawyer, and the novels take place in San Francisco and Los Angeles between 1981 and 2000. A new Rios will be out in 2019. Season one of our podcast adapts the first novel in the series, Lay Your Sleeping Head. In that book, Rios falls in love with Hugh Paris, the black sheep son of a wealthy San Francisco family. Their affair is at the heart of the story and of the murder mystery that Rios must ultimately solve. In the novel, Hugh Paris is a 26-year-old, blonde, blue-eyed, and very handsome young man. When I cast the role, I wasn't necessarily looking for his physical match, since you'll just hear his voice, but by happy coincidence, the actor who's playing the role perfectly fits the book's description. And here he is, Cameron Labrie. <laughs> so Cameron, before we talk about Hugh Paris, let's talk about you. So, do you remember having that aha moment where you thought, I was born to act? Um, I don't know if it's necessarily an aha moment, but I do remember a distinct moment uh, when I was in eighth grade. I was at the high school my brother went to, seeing a, basically a talent show, and one of his classmates um, sang a song from the musical Cabaret. She did, <laughs> maybe this time, was like the... <laughs> was a theater-based talent show, um, and that song just like completely blew me away and made me like, I was just so engaged in the story of that song, and I was like, I don't really know what that is, but I want to do that, and I want to sing that song and do everything like that. And I didn't even know what it was from or anything. <laughs> so you've done um, mostly musical theater, is that correct? I saw you in the Fantastics. You were fantastic. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I do mostly uh, musical theater, but um, I'm trying to dip my toes in everything. It's my first voiceover work, so I'm very excited to be doing this. Not voiceover. Oh. Radio theater. Radio theater. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, you're right. There's nothing on screen. So um, once you once you sort of got the urge to act, or you knew that this is what you wanted to do, were there particular actors, male or female, who inspired you, who, who you wanted to emulate? Um, I honestly, at the point that I decided, or I realized I wanted to do theater specifically, I guess it was more about doing theater and less about wanting to be an actor. Uh -huh. um, so I also did a lot of like technical theater starting out oh, before I, I really knew what I wanted to do. Um, my brother is someone who I kind of looked up to, he also did uh, theater in our community and at the high school and stuff, and he was really the only person who I saw doing that. Um, Your brother's also an actor. Yeah, my brother's also an actor. Um, so I kind of just went into it because he was doing it, um, and like again, seeing uh, seeing his classmate perform that one song really made me for sure I want to do it. Um, I think I'd only done like one play before that, and it was kind of just I'd done I'd played soccer for like. What, like 10 years or something and I was ready to try something different so instead of signing up for soccer one spring I signed up to do a play that the uh, recreation center in my town was doing. So it sounds like for you at least initially it was it was more about just the environment of the theater and not specifically wanting to be an actor so yeah. could you have been behind the, could you have been behind, behind the scenes? Yeah I, I could have ended up there. Um, so what do you think uh, an actor's job is when he or she delivers a performance? Uh, to me, the job of the actor when they're performing is to convey to the audience what they've figured out, basically. So in the figured out about the character, or about the yeah, figure out about the character, about the story, um, just what it all means. So in rehearsals, at least for me, because I just specifically do theater. Rehearsals are spent just figuring out the best version of what we can present. Uh -huh. So once you kind of figure out what you're going for, there are a million different ways you could yeah. convey that. Um, and it's your job to go through as many of those as you can in the time that you have allotted before you have to do it in front of an audience. Mm -hmm. And once you've figured out the best, and that can mean most direct or most beautiful um, way of conveying something, then that's what you give to the audience. Like, for me, at least, I try and do it the same way every time. Mm -hmm. um, and I, yeah, I don't think that most non-actors understand that. I certainly didn't, because to us, and especially if you're a good actor, it looks like you're just up there 
you know. Yes, you're living on. The you're stage. just yes, yeah. you're just a person who's delivering these lines on the stage. Um, but in fact, there's a lot of crap that goes into that, isn't there? Yes, every. Well, I mean, there's different schools of thought about acting, obviously. Sure. Um, but the ones I learned are right, in my opinion. <laughs> um, so, to me, yeah, every moment on stage is should be plotted out. And if I'm being completely honest, I don't feel that I've even reached that point where I have the ability to do everything I want to be doing on stage. Uh -huh. There's still always there's still always at least a few moments for me when I'm performing that I, I haven't completely figured out. But my goal is to know what I'm doing with my face, with my body, with my voice mm -hmm. at every moment. Um, so that I have complete control and I can say that I am intentionally producing this. And to me, that's what makes it art, mm -hmm. is knowing what's going on and um, knowing what I'm showing to the audience.